We're going to be turning to the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1. <coughs> Say it's been good being in the house of the Lord already and enjoyed the song service and a uh, good free freedom of singing. Praise the Lord. Uh, expect to have that freedom again as we try to read God's Word and to uh, say what we have to say. In the, in the book of Galatians, Paul writing to the church there, and he says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. I want to make a little uh, talk here concerning uh, these liberties that we have uh, the understanding of God's grace, of the understanding of salvation, and we're not we're not blind this morning because we have heard God's word proclaimed, and the the biggest part of us that have are are saved, and we have a great liberty this morning, and this liberty uh, is is for us and to share with others about what we have in our souls this morning because it is it is the most wonderful thing that we can have and, and think about this morning. So he said here, stand fast, and he's talking about this morning of, 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 of uh, uh, standing, standing for the truth and standing for what uh, the Bible says, and when we witness to stand fast and if, uh, if people re refuse to accept it that's their problem and that's not ours because if we if we do what we're supposed to do and if we commune with them if we if the holy spirit gives us the others to speak to other people and they don't accept it then the blood their blood is off of us and we don't have to worry about it. Amen. But don't hold it back, but stand fast. And he's, I want you to see this here this morning. Uh, when we have this liberty, we're free from the law. Mm -hmm. And that's what the, uh, Paul was talking about here. We're free from all of those things that you can find over in the book of Exodus and things of doing this and doing that and eating this and eating that and sacrificing this and sacrificing that for the sins that we've done. Listen, we have all of that taken care of. Amen. We have a great liberty this morning. Amen. That we can call upon the name of Jesus Christ and ask the Lord to forgive us, to help us through the day, to uh, let the Holy Spirit speak to our souls and guide us in the way that we should be guided and warn us of the things that we need not to do. And he says here this morning, he says, Christ has made us free from the law. Amen. And like I say, we are free from it. We do not have to depend upon the law. We do not have to do any kind of works as far as for salvation. Right. We, salvation creates works in us, and we have a desire this morning to do works, just even as Brother King and Brother Larry said up this mission. It's a great work. But they didn't set it up to stay saved or to get saved. But it's a great work. And we this morning as God's people need to understand that all of these things that are going on in our life, God knows all about them. Amen. And, and, and this morning, uh, he knows our needs. He, know, he, he, he knows our wants. And a lot of times we think about things that we shouldn't think about because uh, we don't get what we want. But listen we have the greatest opportunity in the world and we have the greatest outlook we can look forward to being with the lord jesus christ amen and so he said here uh and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage and i, I was thinking about this word entangled now you know a lot of times you can be out walking in the fields or in the woods or something or another, and a vine will grab you or a limb will grab you or something like that and throw you down. But listen, did you ever did you ever pay any attention to a spider web? You watch that spider web, and these these things go in them and they stick and they can't move, they can't get out. And that old spider over there, he's sitting over there watching. 
And listen, he don't rush over there real quick, but when he thinks that the old boy's wore down, he goes in there and he crawls on there and he's made the word that he can walk on this stuff. And listen, it's a, it's a picture, it's a picture of the devil. It's a picture of us getting entangled with the things of this world. Amen. And that old spider will bite that, that creature in that thing and sometimes he'll withdraw his blood sometimes he won't but he paralyzes him he takes him back and he saves him for a rainy day if you would or takes him to his his but that is entangled mm -hmm. that's entangled and listen this morning the devil is out there and he can entangle you to the point that you can't do anything and listen, this morning he can ruin your reputation. Mm -hmm. He can he can put you down so low that uh, nobody will have anything to do with you. Won't have no way to listen to you, or they won't listen to you. And so this entanglement, Paul speaks about several times, but he says here, "Be not entangled again with the with the yoke of, of bondage," which he's talking about. Be not entangled with the law. Mm -hmm. He's saying this morning, don't you get involved with worshiping uh, statues and creatures and worshiping men and stuff of this nature. And I spoke last last Sunday on the on this thing with men and and uh, you depending on men to uh, pray you out of hell or pray you to a, another place of forgiveness. Listen, you don't do that because it's not what God wants us to do. We depend upon the Lord Jesus Christ and God our Father. To, to deliver us and to save our souls and to make sure that we make it to heaven. And we will make it to heaven depending upon them. And it's not on the world and what it has to offer. So he says, be not, uh, be not, uh, don't take this yoke of them. And some of them, some of them did and even uh, through circumcision. And God told, God told the people there to, for about circumcision, and but it was for the Jew. Mm -hmm. And then when Paul seen the sheep come down and all the old animals on there that God had told the children of Israel not to eat because they were unclean, but they were up there walking around with the clean ones in that sheep, and he told them about this. Listen, he understood he understood what he uh, had saw, and he uh, he told he let the people know then that God has made a way for all of us, and, and the law is no longer in, in 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 power. And so this is why this morning that we as God's people want to uh, serve Him through faith and by grace. And and listen, I want you to I want you to look at something this morning, Second Peter, if you want to look this morning. I want to read to you just a little bit this morning about this entanglement in Second Peter uh, two. Second Peter two. Second Peter two and verse twenty. <clears throat> now it says in Second Peter two, verse twenty. For if they, if after they have escaped the pollution of the world and he is referring to the law he's referring to works for salvation he's referring to uh, uh, a person that now listen to this and I'll, I'll explain it for if they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they have heard they have heard about how Jesus Christ and, and, and God saves a person and they reject it and they go back to the law or they continue in the law. Listen, it says here, they are entangled uh, therein and overcome and the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Mm -hmm. And why would it be, why would it be that it's worse? Because they have rejected the knowledge that they have heard, or the uh, uh, that that God saved, that Jesus Christ come and died for our sins, and and through that we are saved, but not through the law. And this is the knowledge. This is the knowledge that they reject, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees rejected that, and they they cried out, "No, we need circumcision. We need to keep the law." And this. But listen, this is them in a, in, a, in a nutshell here. And he says, they are entangled again therein and overcome. 
The latter end is worse for them than the beginning, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And that's the rejection there. That's the, that's the picture of the dog going out here and eating something and going back out there somewhere and getting sick and vomiting it up and then coming back and then going back and eating it. And listen, that's what he's talking about here. The dog has returned to the vomit. And this, this that he ate, he, made, he, he realized it made him sick and he got rid of it. But listen, what did he do? He come right back again and gobbled that up again. And he's in worse shape now than he was when he threw it up. And so he said here, but it happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. And these things, these things are entanglements. And you know, even as he's using this old hog, uh, again, and I've, I've, I've said something about it before, but listen, that hog, that hog, you can scrub him clean, put shampoo on him, and all of this. But listen, his nature has not been changed. Amen. He may have heard. Of something, and, and I'm saying not the hog, but it's using it as an example of a person. They person may have heard something, and they may have been told about it. It's a type of washing the hog, but listen, they rejected it, and they walked right back out there in that mud hole. And the person that heard this walked right out there into the world of sin again. And listen, he's accepted it, and he's worse off now than he was before he even started. In so that's that's one of the end things. I want to read you one more uh, thing if I can this morning. And I think it's in 2 Timothy 2 and I'm going to read uh, verse 1 of 2 Timothy 2. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. The same committeth thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And so he's saying, Paul's saying here, you be uh, uh, sure and to remember and to teach to other men and accept it that thou, that thou, in verse 3, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Amen. Jesus Christ. And no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier and so again this entanglement this entanglement we we need to remember these these this word because it is a type of getting into something that is hard to get out of and a lot of times when you get out of it and the lord has mercy on you listen the world the world will not accept you. Mm -hmm. And when the world will not accept you, then listen, you you don't have any uh, anything that you can that you can help them with. Right. Because if they won't accept it and all they want to do is say, No, I remember you when you did this, I remember you when you did that, and you got in trouble. And then and now you're coming back and trying to tell me they won't accept it. And listen, the person that's doing that may have a, a great desire to see that soul saved. But the thing of it is, he got entangled with the wrong thing. So again, back in our lesson now, in verse in verse 2 of uh, chapter 5, Paul, uh, behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Right. And so if a person does this to be, be saved or to be uh, partially saved or whatever they've done it for, but <coughs> they were, it was done for identification, but if they, that was one of the things that they were to do. But if you do this, then you have put yourself in the state of everybody that failed to do what 
what you're going to try to do, and that is keep the law. Mm -hmm. And we know this morning that's the reason why that Jesus Christ came to this earth and died for our sins is because we could not keep the law. And we had to have uh, a Savior, Jesus Christ, as an offering on the uh, offering for our sins. And that is the only way. Through the law, through keeping the law, through doing good, through tithing in the box, through um, feeding the poor, all of these works, listen, they will not save your soul. Right. And so remember these things when when uh, men of so so-called men of God uh, try to tell you, hey, that you need to do this and you need to do that to stay saved. Listen, you don't do it to stay saved. You do it because you are saved. Amen. And so this morning, remember that we are supposed to do good works. We're supposed to bear fruits, but not for salvation, but because that God loved us enough that he saved us and we love him back and through loving him and through our works we <coughs> reach out to the people uh, that we know and we are a good uh, uh, advertisement if you would or a good uh, whatever for to, for the Lord and I'm sorry this morning that some of these words won't come out but listen be sure to remember these things because the old devil, he's sitting right out there with that spider web right out there. He's got, he's got your, he's got your number. Mm -hmm. He's got your number. Now, Amen. You, don't, you don't, you don't, you don't realize it, but he's got your number, and he knows just exactly how that old fleshly body thinks. Mm -hmm. He knows how that he can tempt you and tease you, and and uh, uh, even like uh, uh, as he did for, before Jesus when he said, "If thou be, mm. listen." He'll come to you and say, if thou may. Right. So this morning, remember <laughs> these things. Now, in verse 3, uh, or in verse 4, uh, Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever you are, who, whosoever of you are justified by the law. Ye are fallen from grace. Now listen, this morning, people, John John 3 20, 19 or 9 John 3 something 9 uh, uh, can't think of it now but anyway it says we're free from the law we're free from the law amen we're free from the law and what God hath saved there, it cannot sin but the thing of it is he's saying here this morning that ye have fallen from grace and he's talking about works like James did over there. And he, he's not saying that you can be saved this morning and then fall from that steadfastness or fall from that grace. You cannot do it. It's impossible for you to be lost after you're saved. But listen, there is, there is things in the, here about the law that will hinder you and will keep you from serving the Lord. Amen. And so this morning... Uh, help me and pray for me that I might be able to say what I want to say this morning. So he says, for we, in verse 5, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness, not through the law, but through the faith of the Spirit. For in Christ, in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but faith which worketh by love. And so this morning, these things that he's talking about the law, he says that they don't, they don't, they don't, uh, they're not like faith. So you did, in verse 7 now, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? And this mm -hmm. morning, that is sometimes my part, that's sometimes the way I look at myself, you did run well, but who hinders you? Well, this flesh that I have, it, it hinders me, mm -hmm. and, and it keeps me from really and truly being close to the Lord so many times. And as Brother Larry uh, talked to other Sunday, uh, hey, we're, we're not always right there close to the Lord. Mm -hmm. We're not always right there where that we can uh, say, hey, I'm in the will of God. Because listen, this flesh 
this flesh gets you out of the will of God. Sometimes. Amen. And and so this morning we we hope that these things will will encourage your heart. This persuasion in verse eight, this persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leavening leaveneth the whole lump. Right. And again, that's like Brother Larry was speaking about a little leavening. Just a little, just a little dab of something, and it will, it will pull you over to one side. It'll pull you closer to that web. It'll put you closer to where that the devil can work with you. And so, listen. This morning, we need to stay just as close. And when we, when we, when we have any inkling, when the Holy Spirit speaks to our soul, we better listen. We better listen, and we better stay straight. Because listen, that. Spirit is speaking to you this morning, and I know this morning it does to me. And you that are saved, that Holy Spirit is that little, that little thing. Is, and and and, and, and I may mean, not can uh, tell you what it is, but it's that little thing talking to you and telling you, "Hey, you better watch. You better watch." Because, uh, you'll find out maybe down the road a little ways that it was telling you right. Mm -hmm. You, you kind of messed up. So. Yeah, yeah, and then brother here says in, in verse uh, 10, he says, uh, I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. Right. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. And that is, you know, that is my, my desire for anybody that is being troubled with Satan. But listen, uh, he's going to do it. Uh, that's just like the snake is going to bite you. Mm -hmm. the, snake was, the snake was created as a, as a, a, a and he was, he was cursed. And listen, that snake will bite you. You can get a little bitty snake and you can pet him a little while and you can raise him up there and he'll bite you. Amen. And the same way with Satan, he's going to bite you and, 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 and he's going to hurt you. And so you might as well to, to kind of uh, just get a little bit closer to the Lord. And I, and I heard this guy say one time about getting close. He said, Mama used to whoop me with a switch, and she said, he said, I'd get just as close to her as I could because she couldn't hit me as hard. And that's the same way with us. We need to get just as close to the Lord as we can, mm -hmm. and, and that way Satan can't get to us. Anymore, so. so he says here, he said, verse uh, 13, For well, brethren, ye have, not, ye have been called unto liberty. Amen. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. And again, we have these people, and we and, and they they don't understand the, they don't understand that their flesh has not been saved. They don't understand it, and they'll tell you, "Hey, I hadn't sinned in twenty years." Mm -hmm. And here he's talking about that liberty that we have, that our soul has been saved. But listen, our flesh has not been saved. And we, you can think what you want to about this, but I know this morning that this flesh is going to die, <coughs> and it's going to rot in the ground. Now my my soul is not going to die. Amen. It's going to be carried to heaven uh, and be with the Lord until such time as He comes back and brings it. But listen, this flesh is going to have to pay the sin debt, Amen. which is death. And uh, over in Romans eight, I believe it is, says this, and so. You might as well get ready for it. And you know, we have these uh, uh, people around us and, and I feel for them that are getting sick and they got diseases and, uh, and all this. But listen, it's appointed unto man wants to die. Right. And so if he if he's dies, this flesh is going to die and it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rot. But listen, in that flesh, there is a little seed. That seed will come up one of these days as a glorified body. Yeah. You can depend on it. Because if you're saved, that flesh that is laid there and rotting, that flesh will have a, a sprout, just like a, he speaks of the grain that puts it in the ground, and uh, it, it comes back up. 
It's going to rise a glorified body and it's going to unite with our spirit. And listen, we're going to go to home, go home and be with the Lord. And so here, here he's, he's talking about here, uh, about those that trouble him. And he says, for brethren, you have been called unto liberty. And this is part of our liberty. This is part of our understanding. Only use not liberty for an occasion to boast and flesh, uh, to boast. And I started once trying to tell you this about these people that say that they haven't sinned in 20 years. Listen, they'll tell you, hey, I'm, I'm walking perfect. And, and, and listen, they don't understand what they're talking about. And so this morning, you cannot, uh, a lot of them, you can't, I, I know one all my life. And uh, you can't tell him that he's uh, living above sin, that he's not living above sin, because he believes it. He believes that he's he does everything perfect and he don't sin. And so, listen, he's he's uh, he's in bad shape. Well, he was in bad shape. He's gone now. But anyway, here again. But for brethren, let me read this again. Thirteen. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion. To the flesh, but by love serve one another. Amen. So this morning, don't use the flesh for these things. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this: Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed, you be con do not consume one of another. And so again. <coughs> When he's saying this, be, be careful how you take heed that you uh, be not consumed and, and, and that you don't hate one another. Listen, that's the thing that we, uh, we have a, a trouble with the flesh again. And uh, we, see, we see everybody's faults, but we don't look in the mirror like we should. And so this is, this is something, some way that we could, uh, if we look in the mirror every day, if we look in the mirror, and, 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 and this, is, this may sound foolish to you, but the thing of it is, if you look at yourself, it's just like the man, like the one he's talking about with the, with the uh, mope in his eye. And he said, why would you try to pull out the mope that's in your eye, in his eye, when you got a beam in yours? Right. He said, remove that beam, and then you can remove that yolk, that bolt. So we need to look at ourselves and say, hey, uh, <clears throat> I did this, and I did this, and I did this. And I, and I know I did this, and, and, and so listen, by the time you get through this, and you ain't got time to that. Right. And you won't have to at that time to, to say something about him. So that's what he's talking about. Then in verse 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And the lust of the flesh, like we're talking about, is serving the law, the law and, and, and desire and worldly things. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Now listen, here's the warfare that's going on within you this morning. Your spirit is trying to get your flesh to do right. Your flesh don't want to do right. It don't care anything about doing right. It wants to... And it wants to entertain, entertain itself by worldly possessions. So he says here, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary, they don't see a lot, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Mm -hmm. Now this ye is your spirit, and it has that warfare all the time. Uh, and uh, again, this is this is a, a, a story. I don't know if I've ever said anything to you about it or not. But this guy said that he had he had he seen two dogs, one black and one white. And the black one got all he wanted to eat, and the white one didn't. So the black one could overpower the white. One. It's the same way with our soul and our, with our spirit. If you don't feed that spirit, if you don't read your Bible, if you don't pray. And if you don't do the things that's pleasing to God, listen, that flesh is going to override you. And you can say what you will. Mm -hmm. And you can say, well, I know it won't happen. It will. It will because it's God's word. Mm -hmm. So he said, but if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these and all these 
Uh, 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 these are the things that the flesh loves, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, or citizens, I know that we strap, hatred, verance, and, and immunity, and wrath, and strife, and all of these things. He says, that's the flesh. And being murdered, and drunken, and all this. But the Spirit, in verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Amen. It's, it's, it's pleasing to God when you have these fruits in you and you can control your flesh and keep the others down. It's pleasing to God. And he says here, uh, meekness, temperance, and such is there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit, and let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Mm -hmm. So that ends the chapter. That ends my lesson. Uh, I, I, I hope that uh, what has been said uh, will give you some food for thought. Uh, it's not been said in a, a real a professional way, but the thing of it is, the word has been read, and you know what you've got, what you've got as a warfare going on within you. You know what your problem is. Your your problem is that warfare. Your problem is you've got one fighting against the other. Your your, your problem is that you try to do to one and the other one trying to do you, and so. Your desire is to serve the Lord. But listen, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mighty warfare. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, only way that, the only way that you can do it is to stay close to the Lord and pray and ask His forgiveness. Thank you so much for listening. Amen.